and welcome to Misunderstood, the show for the misunderstood. We are your hosts. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> Today we're gonna be talking about. <laughs> Okay, I'm done with that. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking about the fall of Hollywood. Why are all the characters gay? <laughs> and what the heck is going on with the actors? But first, our patented culture shock moment of the week. Take it away, Nat. Yeah, so everyone in Hollywood might be gay and trans, <laughs> um, but now Leah Thomas is having a bit of an ish. An ish. FINA bans transgender swimmers, including Leah Thomas, from women's events now. I guess that Olympic dream is quite far away there, Leah. Yeah, I, wouldn't it be funny if, if FINA banned transgender swimmers, but not Leah Thomas? <laughs> <laughs> like, she she can come, though. Yeah, that would be interesting. Although, okay. um, I think this is a huge win mm -hmm. for women. Mm -hmm. Um as, and basically, I guess they uh, the new policy for eligibility is that uh, you have to have not experienced puberty past 12. Yeah. Which obviously, if you look, take a nice look at Leah Thomas, gorgeous gal that she is, uh, oh my gosh, you hair. can tell that puberty, <laughs> puberty has happened for that yes. one. <laughs> so, yes, just based on the wingspan. Mm -hmm. Just the wingspan alone. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this is a good step forward. But now let's get those biological males out of prison, huh? Women's prisons? Let's yeah, do it. That might be next. And I feel like this is a good step in the right direction. And honestly, like, I don't want Leah or William or however this individual wants to be called. I don't want their Olympic dream to die. But you got to swim in your category. Yeah. And your category is not the women's category. No, and, and I think they're thinking about creating an open yeah. category for transgender athletes. And, and you know what? women who want to swim in that category for right. the extra competition. Like, like me, uh, I'm going to go. Exactly. Imagine you went and you swim against Leah and you won. I probably will. Look yeah. at me. I'm I actually huge. looked up. The <laughs> I'm huge. I actually <laughs> looked up the um, 500 freestyle uh, U W. What is it? The, the one that she won. It was the U. Yeah. CWA. Yeah. Um, she doesn't hold the record. I did not know that. It, it's so actually a, chick, a female actually, who o owns a, the record. So that's kind of interesting. So maybe there's yes. room for a free open category and maybe women, biological women will win. And, you know, probably that, not, but Leah, maybe probably not. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I wonder if because Leah was so far ahead of the other contestants, I wonder if maybe she slowed down a little bit. Just. Yeah. For I, that exact I think reason. people were. There was some there was some speculation we'll about that. Know. We'll never know. Only yeah. God knows. But yeah. uh yeah, let's get those bio males out of women's prisons. Yeah, that's, that's next. That's the next step. For okay. A free and open prison. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. So oh, okay, Holly okay. Hollywood? Holly weird. Holly, everyone's gay. Yeah. Um <laughs> Well our first article that we want to touch on. Who was this written by? Irma Gersh. It was oh written by me. Oh my gosh. This is called Buzz Light Queer, Middle East Band's movie Light Year over Same Sex Kiss. <laughs> so, um, this is funny mm -hmm. because, okay, so here's a quote from the article that you wrote. So, you know, I'm not telling There's you There's a spelling anything mistake. No, oh, just, I love that. No. Just kidding. No. <laughs> I have a great um, editor. <laughs> so, the LGBTQ employees and allies claimed that Disney executives actively censored overtly gay affection in its feature films. And I'm like, they didn't censor gay affection they chose to they included it and then they bowed to cultures who opposed that mm -hmm. and took it out like yeah how do, how do these allies not see that for what it is like they literally included it in the movie and then removed it to not offend people whose like ideology we don't agree with whatsoever yeah like, and throw gays off a building it's like, so funny too because like all these corporations right now have their rainbow logos for pride except for their middle eastern mm -hmm companies yeah. like their middle eastern sectors or whatever yeah. and it's just Cause like because being gay is a crime in the middle east that's the thing and it's like dude these corporations though they don't care about lgbtq no. a b c d e f g activism they don't care no, they don't. they're pandering to you like they're just pandering and mm -hmm. it's just it's annoying like what? I wish corporations, if they didn't align with pride or they didn't care about pride, just leave it alone. Like, you don't need a rainbow in your logo to be a nice and accepting human being. Like, I'm sure gay people can still bank at BMO. <laughs> like, I'm pretty no, sure. they would feel unsafe. Right. They would feel unsafe. I actually saw an article. It's not on our list here, but it, it was like how the mortgage crisis is hitting LGBT people harder. I didn't read it. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> but I'm, I, I think I kind of want to because I'm like, like how? I'm sure there is. why? I'm 
sure they're grasping at straws, uh, just given it's 2022. Like and it's hitting them harder than it's hitting like families with multiple children yeah. who have more mouths to feed. Yeah. I just can't see it. I, I don't see it. I can't see that either. And then, of course, Chris Evans, who is playing Buzz Lightyear <laughs> in the new movie, is very frustrated very by frustrated. those who don't are maybe critical of the same sex kiss in a film. And I'm I'm a critic of it because I don't think that there should be kissing really in any kids show. But there are though. Yeah, well, I don't I don't think it's fair. And yeah, the, fair the thing is, though, mostly is that most people are straight and kids don't need to be exposed to anything that might confuse them or something that maybe they religiously are uncomfortable with. Like whatever it is, like that's for a parent to decide what they want their kids to be exposed to and to learn. And like, I just don't think it should be we should push anything sexual about gender or sexuality on children like ever. Yeah. But like to push back a little bit like in my favorite disney movie a 16 year old girl named ariel who's a mermaid marries a human and it doesn't matter that she's a fish that's hardly relevant because she gets her legs but she's 16 (laughs) yeah and she marries and they kiss and she's wearing a little bikini top like it's i never found that to be sexual as a child so yeah also a different era of yeah, history but, they still but yeah include kissing yeah in most i think shows but yeah. i hear what you're saying i like, think though the thing is like being straight is not a sexuality because like that's the way you were like that's the way god intended men and women and i think that's the difference like and it's uh, we talk about the slippery slope all the time mm-hmm. like i have no issue with people being gay that's what you do in the bedroom is your business like i really don't care mm-hmm. but like i just don't think any child needs to be exposed to that sort of stuff like, yeah, and and we could argue like maybe they should just not have like sexual relationships of any kind. I agree. In the movies, and I would be fine with that. Like, like Toy Story, it's about toys exactly. And like Frozen, there's no. I don't think there's any. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't believe there's any kisses in that movie. It's I like, don't think it's, so. It's like about sisters, and that's I. I I'm not sure. It's though. had some criticism, but I love Frozen because <laughs> I have a sister, and I'm like her. Her true love is her sister. It's so sweet. Yeah. Um. It's cute. But I do see what you're saying because. It's not quite the same as just a heterosexual kiss because the the that executive producer at Disney a couple months ago openly said that Disney has a not so secret gay agenda. Right. And it's like Disney, your agenda should be to educate and entertain children. Yeah. That not even educate. Like just Fine. entertain, let's Fine. say. Yeah, yeah. Like just come on, like stay in your lane, y'all. Just stay in your lane. Like let's let parents talk to their kids about kisses. Yeah. You know? And I would I would urge any parent who doesn't want their kid to see a gay kiss or a straight kiss just don't let them don't plop them down in front of a movie if you don't know what's in the movie yeah watch the movie before your yeah. kids watch it i think that, or at least that that read up on it yeah. read up on the criticism it's a good point yeah and they're not that long and i love disney movies i love pixar movies so you know sit down watch it before you let your kid be exposed to it yeah no i That's agree some good advice from someone who does not have children <laughs> no no but you know we have brains at yeah least. <laughs> so Ideally. Great. So, uh, so Chris Evans is one mm-hmm. is one star who's taking it into his own hands to because yeah. he's now an ally, even though he's <laughs> a straight white cis male. Yeah. He can be an ally just by being frustrated about that. Um, an- another one is Tom Hiddleston mm-hmm. who plays Loki in the what is it? The Avengers? the Avengers. Yeah, I don't know. I've never seen them in the one with the, the hammer, Thor. Right. Sure, Avengers. Um, so I looked into this a little bit. Um, because apparently. I mean, Loki is from Nordic Nordic uh, lore. Yeah. So in that, Loki is actually like pretty. He's actually. I don't think I saw anything about him being bi, but he can take the form of females too, and he like yeah, birth like to another god. So it's like, in that sense, I kind of get it because it's not like they're tacking this on later, which we'll talk about too, because people do that. They're like, oh yeah, my character was totally gay. It's like, yeah. was it? Like, you're not the writer. But in this case, it's like it's actually ancient lore where the the Loki yeah. is actually like gender fluid. And- no, I understand that, but again, like, what does that have to do with the character necessarily? Like, it was never really a part of the character before. Like, no, Loki, not in- like Tom. He, Tom Hiddleston's been playing Loki for a while. Like, yeah. it never came out except for now. Like, yeah, no, know, it's in the last couple it's years. Popular now. Yeah, like they, if they wanted to be true to the. Um, story at the time they would have included it but it obviously like they go where the money is so yeah. now the money is is with that and yeah. they're like into it and it's like okay you guys like you don't care about the story you don't care about loki you just it's a you rainbow just season clout. you want clout yeah and it's and it's popular and that's where the money is do i have again marvel movies although they are kind of like they're based around superheroes they are for adults like yeah so I, they're very violent they have but, like 
butts in them and stuff. So, like, do I have a problem with a bisexual character? No. It's just, like, we see what you're doing. You're going with the yeah. minors. Like, you don't really care. And the thing is, it's it's on Disney+, Plus though, which is technically for kids. Like, they're trying to, like, market it towards kids, mm -hmm. which I don't know. And then one of the things he says, because he does an interview for Variety, and he explained that he felt it was really important mm -hmm. to address now. his character's <laughs> bisexuality and gender fluidity. It's, like, important for who? Mm -hmm. Like, important for who? Because, yeah. like, honestly... When it comes to a character's sexuality, I really don't care. I yeah. just want to. I just want to be unless entertained. It's like, unless it's like milk, um, <laughs> yeah, like or Philadelphia, you know. or yeah. the one uh, with the guy. Well, Dallas Buyers Club, even yeah. like you know those kinds of movies where it's like a it's, or imitation it's, game. Like that literally is about exactly like Alan I'm, Turing, right? Right. Like, it's important to it's the important plot. Important to the plot. Yeah. Right. And it, I'm all for that. It's I like, like those movies. Like, Pengu is bi. It's like that's not important to the plot. Mm -hmm. Pengu wants to eat fish. Yeah. Like that's not. They're gonna do it. They'll do it. I put it out in the universe. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, and but, I, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say, like, it's these actors always act as though like there's been no gay representation in films, and there absolutely we have just listed been. off a bunch exactly. of them, like, right off the top. It's of like our it's heads. not like there's an issue where like we're completely trying to like smush any gay identity mm -hmm. or gay people in our history. Like they're they're important people. Like mm -hmm. I, I absolutely I want to hear their being. stories. Absolutely. Yeah. I, just, I think it should be represented representative of the population. Yeah. And right now it's kind of hard to calculate what percentage of people are queer because i actually saw a stat recently that was like one out of four people identify as queer it's like that's not that is way more it used to be like one to two percent of the population now it's like you're saying 25 percent of people are queer. a lot of people but you know yeah. i i was saying this to you earlier when we were like just walking um people will just like young women especially like they'll just say oh i'm 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 bi yeah i'm bisexual even though they've literally only ever dated men like maybe they kissed a girl one time and they're like i'm bi and they make this whole scene about it and everyone's <laughs> like you're so brave it's like well, okay it's probably like piggybacking onto like our conversations we've had about like kids young girls who transition because they want clout yes, because they're like exactly. they're middle you class that flag and yeah you don't want to be a cis heteronormative monster they don't so. have any of those brownie points right. so to speak right yeah. with their peers and so. i would know because i am non-binary <laughs> she is she came, for those of you who are new yeah. uh she came out yeah cat here yeah, came out as non-binary a while yeah, ago because and it's you been, know what i wanted the clout and a lot's changed since she came out so, so much other people have to change the way they speak about me yeah but i don't have to change anything I, so it's pretty great <laughs> it's been great for all of us it's been a, le a lot of learning i just wanted to um, touch on one more thing that yeah. i noticed is happening in hollywood so um and we're gonna get do we have that thing about uh tom hanks yeah we'll talk oh, about that yeah. a little bit later but there are actors who are saying only and people too only gay actors should play gay roles so there's that and then there's also all these hollywood people coming out and saying like retroactively that oh yeah I'm cis, or straight or whatever, but my character w is gay. So yeah. it's like, you can only play a gay role if you say it after the time it was already filmed. Right. Like you can't, it's just so stupid. It is Both stupid. are so annoying. Like you're actors. It's like these people haven't been in the news cycle enough and they're yeah. like, I need a way back. Well, yeah, that's you know? when Demi Lovato was upset at that that the froyo shop. Yeah, for having like sugar-free cookies or something. It's like, mm -hmm. I'm fat and I want sugar, how dare you? <laughs> like. People, some people can't eat sugar, Demi. Yeah, Demi. Like, it's not all just, about but, you. But it, she knows that. Yeah. She knows that. She just wanted to be in the news cycle. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Don't Anyways, we all? Yeah. We're trying so hard. <laughs> We're trying so hard. That's why I'm non-binary. Yeah, it's not working out for <laughs> us. But uh, I'm going to have to push you in front of a train or something. But it seems to be working for <laughs> Game of Thrones star Maisie Williams. Yes, this is a great example. Who always thought Arya Stark was queer. First of all, I would just like to say, anytime you ask someone to define what queer is, nobody knows that's hilarious nobody that's knows point. how to define it so if you can define it please send us a mm. message on social media but it's like you always knew like you always knew your character Wasn't was queer she like four i don't know yeah no because i'm pretty sure um sansa her character like she was like 16 no younger when they started right. filming super young she was like at least 11 or 10 or so yeah right? i and think so, so um aria was even younger and so her character was like nine on the show Always was queer though. It was always queer. always queer. <laughs> it's very obvious. I mean, maybe maybe queer people are like I knew when I was nine. Fair enough. Sure, that's I don't fine. know. I don't know. Yeah. But also, like Maisie Williams didn't friggin' write Game of Thrones. Um, one of these quotes is like, um, one of the most popular characters on the show, Arya, was celebrated for her strong, independent, and gutsy persona. It's like, oh, so a straight woman can't be strong no. and gutsy? Like, no. I'm so it's we have gone back in time where if you're not a girl who wants to wear frilly dress, I mean, like, look at me talk. But if like <laughs> I was a tomboy, you too, right? When yeah. you were a kid, like I played in the mud, I wore 
ripped jeans and play I had hockey. brothers. Like, exactly. Yeah. Me and my brother, there was this mud pit. I'm sure I've talked about it before. It was a, <laughs> it was a highlight of my childhood. And I, people, I had short hair and people would confuse me for a boy. And now look at me. I'm a gorgeous female. Yeah, so it's look just, at her. Like, you're allowed to go through a tomboy phase. You're allowed to stay in your tomboy phase. You're yeah. allowed to be a lesbian. You're allowed to be a butch chick who doesn't necessarily mean you're queer or, like, you can just be a butch Let's, sorry, lesbian, but you can be straight and and strong yeah. and gutsy and have short hair and do whatever you want. Doesn't like I'm so sick of people saying like, oh, she doesn't wear want to want to wear a frilly dress, so she's queer. Well, and it's kind what of dangerous because like if you conflate being a tomboy with sexuality and gender identity, like that's gonna confuse young girls who are just you know maybe going through an awkward phase exactly. or who maybe just like, like more sports. masculine things. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with no. that. Like like and it's it's funny. One of the quotes is throughout the. Through nearly the entire Game of Thrones run, fans believed Arya might be queer or gender th- fluid, thanks to the way the typical gender roles and whatever you I mean, kind of said ha- this. But literally had to pretend she was a boy to escape but, getting murdered. Yeah, that so that's where the, the quote says this is including a two season storyline in which she disguises herself as a boy. Not because of her friggin' but, like, identity, because she didn't want to get her head chopped off. But that's what the, that's what I was gonna say. Like, is Mulan a lesbian yeah. too? Yes. Like, is she questioning her gender? Or like, what about Amanda Bynes and she's the yeah. man? Like, yeah. I'm sorry. Like, it's okay. Like, just because your character has to dress up in another gender is close to survive. Plot. Yeah, like for, for survival. I'm yeah. sorry. Like. If it wasn't part of the plot and Arya literally just dressed like a boy the whole time and wore chest binders and like that I could see her being like I think she's queer yeah that's an but but Arya Stark literally had to avoid getting murdered by the Lannisters yeah by dressing up as a boy because they weren't looking for a boy they were looking for a girl so, there you go like guys it's okay and if she was queer fine but like that didn't seem to be part of the plot and in fact they make her have a sex scene with which is kind of weird because she's super young but yeah, in the last season she has a sex scene with a man and and yeah. And Maisie Williams talks about that, and she's like, "I was shocked by it. I thought it was a joke, but it's like, yeah, even T Pain, even T Pain, T Pain says it's it's if the chemistry's off, it must be true. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's just crazy, and like, I, I just think like this is weird attack to just completely erase women and mm-hmm. like straight women and for just some different reason. types of women. Yeah, like, like just let no one's a monolith. Like let's just celebrate individuality. We talk about that on the show like every yeah. second of every day. Like yeah. you can be like." No one is you. That's fine. Yeah. You don't have to be, like, gay or trans. Or you could be gay and want to wear lipstick and dresses. That's like, the thing, though. We that... live in a... I thought we lived in a culture where we're, like, a, a, non-binary should mean, like, I don't fit into this binary role. But, like, we've taken that now. And it's like, no, if I'm non-binary, that means I have short hair and it's blue and I hate society and I want to destroy all, like, classifications of, of woman and man. It's like, yeah. no. No, we can be non-binary in, and now I'm talking about being non-binary again. Yeah, she is. But it's like, you can be a girl and have short hair and play sports, or you can you can do whatever you want and yeah. be who you are, and you don't need to, like, change. Like, it's so, like you said, it's so dangerous to make girls think, oh, I like soccer, therefore so I I'm must a boy. be queer. Yeah, yeah or, I'm I'm in a, or I'm trans. Yeah, you're not. You're just, you just are who you are, and you like what you like, and, and that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, Tom Hanks explains why he wouldn't take another gay role. We're beyond that now, he says. Are we? So are you, are you beyond giving back your Oscar? Just wondering. Mm-hmm. So Hanks played Andrew Beckett, a lawyer who hides his AIDS diagnosis and his homosexuality from his coworkers because he's afraid it could compromise his career. He wants to basically address, like, could a straight man do that role now? No. But I love how he says that after he won an Academy Award. That's the thing. For it. Like you're gonna give back your Academy Award, Hanks. But it's like you, you're so sorry. You don't think an actor is allowed to act? Yeah. An actor is not allowed to act. Tom, just quit. Just quit. I don't remember Tom Hanks getting stranded on an island <laughs> in real life. Like, yeah. Like that role of Castaway should have gone to someone who was actually stranded on an island. It's true. Because they are so marginalized. Those poor yeah. People and stinky. Yeah. He he just thinks it's inauthentic for a straight man to play a gay he, actor. You're an actor. What are What is the role of an actor I, I if not to act? I don't like, understand it. It's just crazy. And it's I mean, crazy. there's so many like gay characters coming out in films now too. So it's like, I guess you're going to be out of a job soon, Tom. Yeah, like, because what you happens? can only play an aging, out of date, out of touch <laughs> actor. Straight man. Yeah, like that's all you can play because and yeah. uh, allegedly that's what you are. <laughs> <laughs> Oopsie. Oopsies. Um, I think it's it also reminds me of comedians do this a lot where like um 
Sarah Silverman has done this. Trevor Noah has done this, where in the past they have made offensive jokes. Mm -hmm. And then now they're like, yeah, but you can't make those jokes now. So it's like, I'm going to step through the doorway. I'm going to make those people, because that's why you're famous. People like those jokes. I'm going to step through the doorway and I'm going to just close it behind me. So that, because really you don't want new people. Why would you want the market, your market to be saturated with that's more a good talent? Point. Of course you don't. So you step through that door of fame. You close it behind you. It's This is what Tom so Hanks is doing. he's gatekeeping fame. He is. He is. And, and we're going to talk about this later, but yeah. I personally think that Jennifer Aniston is doing the same freaking thing. Yeah. But we'll talk about that later. Um, but before we get to that, perhaps we should talk about two other celebrities who are... Oh, my God. How many are there? There's so <laughs> many of them. But, you know, in the season of Pride. Yeah. Uh, so Kesha says she's not gay or straight in a Pride <gasps> Month post. If but only, then, If only there was a word for that. Yeah. <laughs> but then it's like, what are you? I don't know. I mean, it's bisexual. They, it's not, she's acting like she invented a new identity. She did, though. Well, she, right, you know, she's been out of the news cycle for a bit, too. So yeah. maybe that's what it is. But who's even... Who is she? No, I know who she is, but like, <laughs> <laughs> she's a singer. She has terrible music. But um, like, she wanted to take a second quote to tell everyone that you were not only enough just as you are, but the world is so effing lucky to have you. She wrote, I'm not gay. I'm not straight. I don't know what I am. How do those things correlate? Yeah. Like, what's the, what do you mean you're not, what is you being enough of any, like, what does that have to do with your sexuality? Also, like, why are you so confused, Kesha? Like, yeah. even if you're bisexual, you know that. You're like in your 30s. Yeah, like it's you've been around. You've been around. You're like, boy, <laughs> okay, girl, yeah. Like it's not rocket science. Yeah. No, it's really not. And I don't know. I don't see what's so confusing about it. No. What is confusing though, and this is a bit of a side note, but if but if you're bisexual, is that ad admitting that there are only two genders? Yeah. Ooh. 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 Kesha, Ooh. bigot, bigot yeah. alert, red flag. Yeah, we made this comment the other day where it's like the whole non-binary category is actually admitting that there is a binary. <laughs> yeah. That's it's like, I'm non-binary. I don't fit into female or male. It's like, okay, but I thought y'all were saying that it's all a spectrum. It's a disaster. It's a disaster. It's a disaster. It's, it's an ideological disaster. Yeah. <laughs> it's, the world is on fire. <laughs> um, and it's even more on fire, I think, because Ian McKellen, who's 80, is going to be reprising the role of Hamlet. That's so weird. So Hamlet is what, like 30-ish? Yeah. Like he's a, young, he's young. he's a young man. And guess what, guys? I know Ian McKellen is gay, and also he's unbelievably talented. He's amazing, and he's I love Gandalf. Uh, amazing. He's the best. But um, apparently Hamlet is bisexual. And, you know, I, I would just like to say, I think maybe Hamlet has ADD. You know, it may, I, he's not bisexual. I think he's just a little confused because, like, a ghost is telling him to kill his uncle. Yeah. Like, I, I think mean, he has bigger fish to fry. On. And um, so Ian McKellen, sir, my my mistake, yes, sir, sir Ian McKellen, he quotes a line from Hamlet <laughs> um, as the evidence that Hamlet, he's like, you didn't know. And <laughs> Hamlet is clearly bisexual because of this line. So it's Rosencrantz to Hamlet. And he says, you did want, you did love me once. It's a bit of a stretch. It's, it's like, I love multi many things. And maybe in today's culture, men don't say, I love you, bro, like as much as they should. There's that great movie, I Love You, Man. Have you seen yeah. that? Yeah. Oh, I love that movie. Yeah, it's, it's good. So cute. Yeah. But, but, <laughs> so maybe men don't say, I love you as much as they used to. But to say that this line is the evidence that Hamlet was bisexual. Like one line in the whole play. Yeah, exactly. And like, again, do I care? No. No. Uh, uh, do I have Hamlet posters all over my room? Is it going to crush me personally? No. No. It's just... But like, Sir why? Ian, you're all, first of all, you're already in, knighted yeah. by the queen. You're one of the most famous actors on the planet. And you're homosexual yourself, so you don't need the clout. You don't. You just, it's it's enough. It's, it's enough. Guys, it's, I can't wait for June to be over. Yeah. To be honest. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be good. Life Na will be better. In that vein, Nat and I are going to the Pride Festival. <laughs> We're going to the Pride Yes, yeah, so we'll see you there. <laughs> um, anyway, my advice to you, Ian, is just put on those tights and give her. Yeah. Okay? And also maybe let. A younger person play the role? Can't yeah. you play the uncle or something? Yeah, shouldn't he? Or the ghost? Shouldn't he be the ghost? Yeah. Like, like he looks like a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. You got told, Sir Ian. Mm -hmm. Told. Anyway, so Anyways. everyone in Hollywood is gay. Yeah. Or their character is gay. Yeah. And you're not allowed. If you're an actor, you are not allowed to play a straight actor. You're not allowed to play a gay character. No, you should just be gay. It's probably for the best for your career. Yeah. At this point. Because gay characters can absolutely play straight characters. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, for sure. Hello. All right. Hello. Okay. So more so, Hollywood talk. Yeah. Yeah. Just talking about some nepotism. Oh, yeah. So Jennifer Aniston trolled as nepotism baby for calling out stars famous for nothing. Yeah. So I guess she spoke to Sebastian Stan during an Actors on Actor interview for Variety about fame in 2022. And she spoke on how personalities like Paris Hilton and Monica Lewinsky ascended to fame with the rise of internet culture. 
Um, she said they're famous for doing nothing. And I'm like, well, they did something. Yeah. Ooh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Not the best things, yeah. but they did something. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I, You're right. To, like, to add on to what we were talking about earlier, she is gatekeeping fame a little yeah. bit, I think, because she came from actor parents yeah. like she's not like i think I, I was reading a little bit more she did work hard to get to where she is but it's like yeah, you had she a had little to be talented. bit of help yeah she, like yeah you can get so maybe your parents got you the call like they got you the audition yeah they but, got her in the door exactly but she's hot and she's funny so yeah you know um but i, I have a list here of other actors who have famous parents and this is not the full list this is just like a it's probably an endless list in 2022. Oh, yeah. It's super. And okay. So you'll also notice trends. So Gwyneth Paltrow, Drew Barrymore, Jake and Maggie Gyllenhaal, George Clooney, Lena Dunham, Kristen Stewart. So basically the annoying ones. Yeah. The ones that are always like telling everyone like you can't fly in a plane and like you have to be like conscious of your like footprint. <laughs> like shut up. Like, shut up, Maggie. Shut up, Maggie. I do like Jake. Jake Gyllenhaal though. I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, no, these are talented people. Yeah. Some of them. Some of them. Some of them. Yeah. Ooh. Questionable. Questionable. Um, I just think it's funny that, like, uh, to be like, it, Jennifer Aniston's a nepotism baby. It's like, okay, who isn't? Yeah, there's no, a absolutely. Couple, there's a couple people in Hollywood who literally made their way without having famous parents. I can't name any because I didn't look that up specifically. <laughs> I'm sure they exist. Rachel like, McAdams. Uh, she just doesn't have famous parents. Really? Nope. Wow. Good for you, Rachel. And, and she's you know, Canadian. She, I was going to say. Yeah. And Brian Cranston, I don't believe he has famous parents. And he was... He struggled a lot before he was famous. Yeah, and uh, the guy from New Girl mm -hmm. and John Hamm. John, John Hamm, Hamm worked really hard to get to where he is. Yeah. Anyway, we're, we're, we digress. But the point is, is so many of them are nepotism babies, and that's kind of how things work in the world. And yeah, not I, just in Hollywood. I would like to give her a little credit, though, because there are just too many people trying to be famous. And I don't think that it's fair that TikTok stars are getting cast in movies. I really don't, because it's a craft. Like, it's an art form, and she... I, I don't know. Like... I, I, I just think that like some like imagine you're an actor, which we both have been and you're competing for this role and it's between you and like some TikToker who like takes their clothes off. Yes. And they're only getting cast because of their large following. But that's al always like, yeah, that's always been the case. But like, it just cheapens film because it, it proves that it's all about money and it's not about art anymore. Yes, but I, I would argue it always has been like, yeah. So there's this next article from Evie on the same kind of note. It's in defense of actresses, why we need to stop giving influence, influencers acting roles. And I disagree with the whole point of this article because, so there's this quote, in the era of social media, becoming Instagram famous or trending on TikTok is the new celebrity status. In fact, many young influencers are landing TV gigs due to their large followings and engagement. The question becomes, is this fair to real trained actors? So my point is, is it fair that Jennifer Aniston got auditions because of her famous parents is it fair that some girls like you mentioned will get roles because they take their clothes off no but that's hollywood baby that's yeah hollywood it is and it's it is not corrupt. fair yeah no, it's that's never true. been fair and w like jennifer aniston she was on tv in the golden age of the sitcom and she profited off of that but now that day age is over yeah and it now is, it's yeah. the age of tiktok so like She's just an old lady who's looking back and she's like, I don't understand these kids. And it's like, because you're not them. Like you profited off of the age that you were in and you and you made it big. And so stop gatekeeping fame. Like I don't like influencers and I don't I won't yeah. watch them, but I but I don't care. I don't watch movies anyways because the movies well, are garbage. Yeah, which we'll get to in a minute. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's true. Um, I just I don't know. I have a I bit of a soft saying. spot for yeah actors who really do want to make it and like I just think it's kind of gross how you can be famous for anything these yeah. days and maybe that's maybe that just uh, kind of encourages people to maybe hey let's pay less attention to these people or let's not mm -hmm. listen to these people as much because literally anyone can be famous for doing nothing which means they, they have no right telling you or I how to live our lives yeah. you but know it's our fault as consumers for making them famous yeah like and like the show <laughs> and and there's that old saying that's like give them what they want to see give them people what they want to see P if people want to see the Danilios on in a movie even if they're terrible people will watch it that's what hollywood is they yeah. never care like to say that they care about artistic integrity we both know that's bs yeah because they we, what about the harvey weinstein harvey weinstein thing yeah like any girl who shows her butt to an old producer man was getting roles where this other like i've heard of stories way back in the 60s of actresses who wouldn't sleep with the directors and then they were 
blackfired. Fired, yeah. Exactly. And they were called all sorts of horrible names. And they're like, okay, well, I guess I'm just going to like live my life. It's like, this is not new. No, that's a good point. Hollywood but is terrifying. It is. And I think it does prove that the golden age of the industry is long, long gone. If, if it ever even existed. But I do think we've seen a huge shift in the quality of content, yeah. especially uh, as it pertains to the rom com. Yeah, they are not good anymore. No, if, I haven't I watched a rom com in years, like a new one. The thing is, I don't even think you could classify anything that comes out now as a rom com in the same way because I feel like maybe like Crazy Rich Asians was yes. rom com. I didn't see it, but it was I, great. I, w- I heard that's great, and I will. I would like to watch. That. You that should sounds, watch that one. Yeah. Um, and there was all those Catherine Heigl's back in yeah, but those that like was twenty seven like, dresses. Yeah, exactly. yeah, no, for sure. But I anyway, we there's this other article from Evie, and it kind of poses the question why is it that newer movies that should fit into the same category are falling short for us like we do keep rewatching, i keep rewatching yeah, the same old thing too. um and so they have a couple points here that maybe we could go through mm-hmm. so the goal of movies was different back then which maybe that's up for debate because we kind of both agree that hollywood's always been horrible and the goal yeah, has always been but i think the gold now is woke like yeah exactly a statement yeah they want they want to like preach at us yeah and that's why movies are so politically correct and it's funny and what i find confusing and i don't know if you agree is that like these these producers and these movies they keep making these woke films but like they keep tanking it's, yeah, like, it's not what the people want I know, so I know. why are you playing yeah. this game like yeah, if it's right. all about money like follow the money yeah. honey you yeah. know yeah yeah maybe you know how like the co- big companies have like social credit scores yeah and they i don't know what the benefit of them is but maybe that's m- worth more than making uh, right. a blockbuster. Like, that's a good you point. You know, the whole concept of the producers, the musical, like you can make more with a flop than I don't think that I have no idea about like fi- like entertainment finances. Yeah. But maybe there's something to that where it's like as long as people are working, mm-hmm. it barely matters how much money you make. I, I can't imagine that's true. I- I'm just trying to pontificate about what it could possibly be. <laughs> no, it's true. I, I mean, yeah. It's just interesting that movies do feel the need to comment on every social mm-hmm. issue. And whereas, like, I don't know about you, but like, movies for me, it's like escapism. Like, mm-hmm. I just want to relax. I don't want to think about work. I don't want to think about politics. I just want to mm-hmm. watch hot people do crazy, extraordinary things. Yes, I agree. And I want to live vicariously through them. Yeah, you know. And I think it's funny because Top Gun. I haven't seen it yet, the new one. Neither. I didn't see the original, so. But I, I heard that the new one is really, really good, and everyone's really hyped on it. Yeah. And I also saw an article that was like, why Top Gun is like toxic masculinity, and it's like okay, well, I guess people like that. Like, sorry. Yeah. They, they like America and they like jets and they like men. Like, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I want to see hot men. Yeah. Like, a, kill me. Like, sue yeah, me. You know, seriously. like, whatever. Yeah, no, it, that's a good point. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> she's so smart. I know. And she's only 17. <laughs> Can you believe it? Yeah, I think mostly I would just love it if Hollywood realized that, like, you can't appeal to everyone. And maybe there should be, like, a category that does cater to these idiots, Mm -hmm. no offense, who need everything to be, like, pandered to them with their... That can be its own Social category. justice. Yeah, like... And then we can have the rest. Yeah, I'll take the rest. Like, Mm -hmm. I'll take Ryan Gosling. Yeah. Please. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I... Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Succinct. Love it. Okay, Bam. so there's this, I know we've probably been talking about this too long, but I want to talk about this Jamie Chung yes. surrogacy thing. So there's this, okay, they call her an actress. <clears throat> this is an article from EV Magazine. The article titles, Actress Jamie Chung Chose Surrogacy Over Pregnancy Because She Didn't Want to Lose Opportunities in Her Acting Career. And in this first paragraph, they're like, she was, she r- launched into fame on um, oh, shoot. Real World. Real or, World. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, Real World San Diego. I don't even know what that is. It's Actually, a reality I don't even know show. Who she is. So she's a reality star who has had a few acting roles, is what they said. Okay. She's also married to a, a guy who's, an, who's actor. an actor. Um. So she's so to call her an actress is a bit of a stretch. Yeah. Like it would be like saying, like any of the girls from The Bachelor are, are actors. actors. Like yeah. it's like, whoo, okay. Yeah. Um. But here's a quote. Uh, oh Shung knew she and her husband wanted children. But she was afraid of what might happen to her career if she took time to get pregnant and give birth. Yeah, a wow. lot of successful actors, Jamie, before you, have... Actual like, actors. Actual actors have had multiple children mm-hmm. throughout their careers, yep. and they still got a few Oscars on their shelves. Yeah. Like, and it's like, you mentioned this, it's like, so you don't have time for the pregnancy, but you're going to have time for the children once they're born. And they're that's twins. That's how it works. Oh, yeah. That's twins. A, so that's she now handful. has two 
children to take care of but that's fine because you know she already farmed out the first job what's to say she's not going to do that <laughs> with the actual raising of the children i think this is a branch of toxic mommy culture it's so toxic. because it's such a toxic take that parents think like having kids is going to ruin your life and ruin your career like it's a blessing and a privilege and not everyone has that privilege yeah. and it's just so well it's very privileged of you to be able to pay someone hundreds of thousands of dollars to carry your children mm -hmm. like it's just insane it's like insane. like look in the mirror girl yeah like you crazy so she said on the topic um people are people probably think oh she's so vain she didn't want to get pregnant and it's so much more complicated than that for me personally and i will leave it at this it's like <laughs> it's like i worked my ass off my entire life to get where i am she continued i don't want to lose opportunities and i don't want to be resentful wow girl just, you're already talking about being resentful towards your children that you just basically bought from someone else like yeah. you resent and you worked your ass off to get on the real world san diego <laughs> <laughs> like what are you talking about you, your parents must be so proud they're so proud of you they're so proud of you it's just like um oh and also she claims to have struggled with postpartum depression after yeah. the twins were born. That's rude. That's soup. That's a bad take. Yeah, it's a bad really take. bad take. Some women actually really suffer. Yeah, uh, like I, I can't imagine. But like, come on, like don't minimize other people's feelings because you're trying to make excuses. Yeah, like you're trying to justify She's trying to be like I'm a real mom. Yeah. I want to die. Um, so <laughs> I looked into postpartum depression a little bit because I've heard a lot about it, but I don't know a ton about it. But um, it's a bit of a mystery, but there are two main causes for it. So the first one, the obvious one, is that there's a huge um, drop in hormones after you give birth and you can actually be chemically depressed. Right. And some women are chemically depressed for months and some enter into psychosis, which is absolutely terrifying. The other one is maybe what she's talking about is that you now have these de this dependent and it's a baby and it's a lot. It's a lot it's of pressure. Overwhelming. It's overwhelming. It's yeah. overwhelming and you have a lack of sleep and yada, yada. But again, like I would argue... This is someone who's in Hollywood, who's has help, who has help. Exactly. So it's like how and and, you know, she's not staying up all night with her babies because she would be too tired for her audition yeah. the next morning. And that's <laughs> clearly the most important thing. Like she said, you can't even take a couple of months off of your job because people yeah. will forget you. It's like, first of all, how forgettable are you? Second of all, this is going to be your life until the kids until you die. You are a well, mother. And yeah, we were talking about this before. It's like if you. If you want to work on your career, that's fine. You had already frozen your eggs anyway. Like, mm -hmm. why not just delay yeah. having children? Like, you didn't need to have them right now. If like, you were gonna, if you were gonna have a surrogacy, exactly. Yeah. Like, it just seems so silly. And so silly. I, honestly, Jamie, like, you just want, you just want fame, and we're giving you a little bit more of that today by talking about you. But yeah. like, good lord, these Hollywood celebrities. This isn't even a Hollywood celebrity, but these no. people are just crazy. No, and and you can also argue she just doesn't want to like give up her bod. Yeah. Like, come on, girl. Yeah, like, sorry. Your children should be worth more to you than your next, like, reality TV gig. And if they're not, like, I feel really bad for your kids. Yeah. You suck, Jamie. <laughs> you suck. Um, but on on a high note. Yeah. Let's end it on a high note. Let's end it on a high note. There is another article from Evie. Uh, 13 iconic celebrities who left Hollywood to prioritize motherhood. Yeah. Which is so nice. It is and nice. And these are huge names on here. They're Do huge you wanna, names. You name them? Yeah. So uh, we have Eva Mendez. We have Cameron Diaz. We have Shania Twain. Yeah. Julia Roberts. Who? Julia. <laughs> Julia freaking Roberts. Yeah. Sandra Bullock. Yeah. Like so Drew many. Drew Barrymore. Yeah. Like there's so yeah. many. And Adele. Did the, she wasn't on the list, but Adele also. Right. Did that for many years before she just recently came out with another album. These are not D-listers. No. These are like the most, some of the most famous actors in the world. Yeah. And you know, to be, to play devil's advocate, you could argue, well, these people are already rich enough and stable enough in their careers sure. that they didn't need to worry about uh, their career and they could take the time off. Sure. That's an yeah. argument. It's just like motherhood is the most important job you're ever going to do. So, yeah, and to focus on that is such a such a wonderful thing to do. And I think that's what mothers are called to do. Right. So, like, it's nice to just see these Hollywood people be moms. Yeah, because that's what they they wanted to have kids yeah. like their kids didn't choose to be born. So you got to, no. you know, you brought them into the world. Yeah. And you have the responsibility of taking care of them and giving them everything. So, like, sacrifices need to be made. And a lot of I remember we talked about. Um, what was the actress that was pregnant during one season of the show that you were? Oh, Mindy Project. Okay, Mindy, Mindy Kaling, yeah. Kaling. And Julie, Julia Louis-Dreyfus was pregnant, I think, once or twice during the filming of Fre uh, Seinfeld. Courtney Cox was pregnant during the filming of Friends. Yeah. Like, you can work. Yeah. People work when they're pregnant. Especially if you're talented enough. And, like, I think people will make it work around you, yeah. you know? Like, 
I'm sorry. I don't think Jamie has that shot. Maybe that's why. Yeah, exactly. But she has like a rich husband who's in the Mindy Project. Yeah. Or so it's like you could have, you know. There were some options, she, Jamie. You had options and you also had your ex present. You could have done it later. Anyway. Shame on you. Shame on you. Okay. That was the sure. That's the sure. That's the sure. Tune in every wait, Tuesday wait, at wait. 7 p.m. on Rebel News Plus for new episodes of the show. Make sure if you have not subscribed that you subscribe. Go to rebelnewsplus.com right now. Yeah. 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 And if you don't have a Rebel News Plus subscription, I'll, okay, I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> if you don't have a Rebel News Plus subscription already, you can listen to the uh, show for free um, on all your favorite streaming platforms. I like to listen to on Spotify. I'm while an I'm driving, gal. Right? Because I already pay for Spotify. And then every Saturday uh, on YouTube, Rumble, rebelnewsplus.com, you can watch the sure for free. For sure, for free. So be sure to do that and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please help us get some cash for Rebel News. Keep yeah. these lights on. Keep these lights on. We need them to block out the wrinkles. Just mm -hmm. kidding. We're smooth. We're super and, young. Um, yeah, follow us on... Uh, social murderer. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they should call it social murderer yeah that's good we'll make a documentary called that right here is our stuff Leave love dogs. you dogs bye bye I'm swimming like leah i'm drowning